Good morning, and welcome to the house of the Lord. A new year is upon us, and none of us knows for certain what that new year will bring, but as believers in Christ, we can approach the new year with joy and confidence, knowing that our Father in heaven is in control and will work all things for the good of his people. With that, please rise as we begin our service. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ. To the praise of his glorious grace, O come, let us worship the newborn Savior.
amazing grace, God has adopted you and me as his children. Have we treasured that blessing or treated that blessing with scorn? In humility, humility, let us confess our sinfulness and plead for God's mercy. O eternal God, forgive me, for I have sinned. I have failed to appreciate your grace. I have failed to reflect your love. I deserve to be sent to hell forever. I have no plea but this. Jesus Christ lived for me, died for me, and rose for me. For Jesus' sake, have mercy on me, O God. Our eternal God has had mercy on us. In Jesus, we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. He lavished forgiveness on us with all wisdom and understanding. He has made this wonderful good news known to you. You are forgiven, at peace with God. O oh, come, let us worship the newborn Savior. God has made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ. To bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. He did that in order that we, who were the first to hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. He is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession. To the praise of his glory. Let us pray. Almighty God, in mercy, you sent your one and only Son to take upon himself our human nature. By his gracious coming, deliver us from the corruption of our sin and transform us into the likeness of his glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh, come, let us worship the newborn Savior. Let us
And you may be seated. Our first sermonette for today will be based on Psalm 2. Is it fair to say that the world is a erratic place with all kinds of surprises that have taken place? I think that's pretty fair. You think of things, famous gaffes in history, like, for example, Neville Chamberlain's famous, there will be peace in our time speech, which was very quickly followed up by Adolf Hitler attacking, I don't remember, Poland, I think, and World War II fast on its heels. So much for peace in our times, huh? 20 years back, how many of us had ever heard of a guy named Osama bin Laden? Then we watched the Twin Towers come crashing down. And so it's fair for us to ask the question, what's going to happen in 2024? Is there some new Hitler, some new Osama bin Laden in place who's going to arise? And guess what? You and I have no idea. And so we look at verse 4 of the psalm, the one enthroned in heaven laughs. The one enthroned in heaven laughs? Yep. It's a prophecy about Jesus. The New Testament leads us to be aware of that. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. Why? Because ultimately every world ruler who comes and goes serves God's purpose somehow, some way. Ultimately, God is the one who is in charge, no matter who is, quote-unquote, in charge. Oh, sometimes it's obvious there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. Yes, we can see very clearly how Caesar Augustus was serving God's purpose. Sometimes you and I have no clue like with an evil dictator like Adolf Hitler. But the one enthroned in heaven continues to laugh. Because no matter who is on the world stage, no matter who is on the human throne, somehow, some way, they will advance God's purpose. Somehow, some way, they will advance the kingdom of God. And my brothers and sisters, even as that has been true for all of history, so it will be true during this little stretch of time known as 2024. The one enthroned in heaven will continue to laugh. The Lord will continue to scoff at his enemies. The Lord will continue to rule all things for the good of his people. And because of that, you and I can enter 2024 with joy and confidence. Amen? Amen? Let's sing about it by singing the two verses of God Rest You Merry Gentlemen, seen on page five or up on your screen.
early years of Jesus' life were, at best, challenging, at worst, harrowing. The wise men, not long after Jesus was born, probably a couple months after Jesus was born, no, the wise men don't show up at the manger on Christmas Eve. That's not how it happened. It came later. Probably within a couple of months, they show up in Jerusalem saying, where's the one who's been born king of the Jews? We've seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. And that made Herod furious. Herod was the king. And Herod had just recently put some of his own kids to death to make sure that certain of his kids would succeed him on the throne. He was an evil guy. And those people were going to succeed him on the throne. There was going to be no newborn king. And so Herod is going to kill the kids who are in Bethlehem because there's not going to be any newborn king who's going to stand up against Herod. Herod is the king and the people he wants to be king. And so God comes to Joseph in a dream and says to him, get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt. And apparently in the middle of the night, that's exactly what Mary and Joseph do. They get up and off to Egypt they go. Not exactly the way a, new, a couple who is newly wed with a little baby would like to be passing the first few months of their wedded life. Amen? Sometime later, Herod dies. And so God again comes to Joseph and says, go back. The ones who are seeking the child's life have died. When they get back, they find that Archelaus, who is Herod's son, is reigning in his place. And so they didn't think that would be any better. And so off to Nazareth, they go. But catch the two phrases. Look at verse 15. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, out of Egypt I called my son. And then look at verse 23. And he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets. He will be called a Nazarene. Yes, it was harried. Yes, it seemed haphazard -ed. But was it? No, it wasn't. God had foreseen this and had put this into his plan hundreds and hundreds of years before. Which allows us to be reminded of another wonderful truth about our God. You have a God who is faithful to his promises. When God makes a promise, you can absolutely count on the fact that he will keep it. And so you think of all the promises that God has made to you. Surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. You think about the wonderful truths he has spoken to you, things like, you are my son. You are my daughter. More on that in the third sermonette. The fact that he will make all things work together for good for those who love God. The fact that our citizenship is in heaven and that we eagerly await a Savior from there. The Lord Jesus Christ who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. And we could go on. He knows the plans he has for you. He knows the promises he's made to you. And you have a God who will be faithful to every one of the promises he's ever made. And because of that, no matter what might come in 2024, you can approach it with joy and confidence because you have a God who keeps his promises. Amen? And amen. Let's sing about it by singing to shepherds as they watched by night.
But when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. Because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you're a son, God has made you also an heir. My brothers and sisters, in my opinion, this is the number one reason why you can enter 2024 with joy and confidence. It's because of who you are. Or to put it slightly differently, whom God has made you to be. You are his beloved children. That's the truth. Oh, granted, it wasn't that way. By nature, we were born into this world sinful, enemies of God, hating God, hating everything he was about. But that's what Christmas is all about. Jesus didn't come to this world because we were good people. He came to this world because we were sinners who needed to be saved. Jesus entered our world and saved us. And in amazing grace, in the course of time, God has come and convinced you, convinced me, that Jesus is indeed your Savior. That he came for you. And he adopted you into his family and gave you the full rights of sons. Now, why does it say sons? It's because at that time, in that culture, the ones who were the heirs were almost always the sons. The daughters rarely inherited. It was the sons who inherited. And so by saying you have the full rights of sons, what God is saying is, you are my heir. You will get the inheritance that I have prepared for you. Because you are my daughter, you are my son. You really are. That's what I've made you to be. And so you get to cry out along with the Spirit of God, Abba, Father. One time I was in Israel. We were in Tiberias is the name of the town. It's right on the Sea of Galilee. And it was up above the fourth, fifth floor, something like that. And my brother and I were walking to the elevator. And there was a couple of little kids running around. And uh, they'd gotten disconnected from their parents, but they didn't realize it. And all of a sudden, they saw myself and my brother. And, oh, we don't know who these guys are. And all of a sudden, the little kid cries out, Abba, Abba. And can you imagine, my brothers and sisters? That's the way you get to approach God. You get to come to God and say, Daddy, Abba, oh my Father. And you know what? He wraps his arms around you because you are his beloved child. And if you are his beloved child, which you are, can there be any other way to enter 2024 other than with joy and confidence? I think it's the only possibility because you are the children of God. Amen? And amen. Let's again sing about it. Or no, let's respond in faith. Christmas is actually about the love of God the Father, first and foremost, who is willing to send his Son for us. So for our confession of faith today, we use the first article of the Apostles' Creed and Luther's biblical explanation. We speak it together. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God created me and all that exists and that he gave me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my mind and all my abilities. And I believe that God still preserves me by richly and daily providing clothing and shoes, food and drink, property and home, spouse and children, land, cattle, and all I own, and all I need to keep my body in life. God also preserves me by defending me against all danger, guarding and protecting me from all evil. All this God does only because he is my good and merciful Father in heaven, and not because I have earned or deserved it. For all this I ought to thank and praise, to serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. We continue with our offering. We are going to enter 2024 with joy and confidence. There are millions of people out there who will not. We have the message to share with the world. Our offerings are a small part of our sharing the message of Jesus with all the world. After the offering is taken, we'll join together in singing the hymn, Lord, You Are Rich Beyond All Splendor. I think this is a brand new hymn for us, so it may take us a minute to catch on. Just sing along as you become comfortable.
Looking to a new year, we lift up our voices, praying with confidence. Our Father in heaven. Eternal God, our creator, in your mercy you have restored us as your forgiven children. Trusting in Jesus' sacrifice and victory in our place, we come before you. Hallelujah. We revere your supreme majesty as designer of your universe and author of time. Help us to know you as Lord of our lives here and in eternity, as you have revealed in your holy word. Your kingdom come. Uphold your claim on our hearts, reign in our lives, and employ us for, the, for sowing the seed of your saving word in more and more hearts in the year ahead. Your Overcome the influence of Satan on us and in, on us in this fallen world and make us earnest to conform our desires and our actions to your plan for our future with you. Give us today our daily bread. Sustainer of life, you have provided for our bodily necessities in the year past. Fill us with appreciation and trust. Year by year, keep us alert for meeting the needs of others. Forgive us. Continue to show us pardon for Jesus' sake and keep us ready to do good even to those who do wrong to us. While there still is time in this passing life, help us point them to your saving mercy. Lead us not into temptation. Defeat the enemy who wants to strangle our faith in disregard for your word. Bring to naught the world's, the world's ruinous appeal to our self-centered nature and deliver us from the hold of un unrepentant sin. But with us through every, be with us through, through every trouble so that when we depart this life, we will still be trusting and walking with our living Savior. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. We look to you as the Lord of time, governor of your universe, head of your church, and we join with angels to adore you from whom all blessings flow. In joy and confidence we say, Amen. May he, who by his incarnation united things earthly and heavenly into one, fill us with the joy that comes with the knowledge of the forgiveness of sins and the hope of eternal life and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. We'll remain standing for our closing hymn. be seated. At this time, if you would kindly fill out our friendship registers, who are, which are located at the center of our pews, 
and also take this time to reflect on today's messages. Once again, good morning and welcome. Because we knew we'd have a lot of people traveling on the road, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, we did take this Sunday off of Bible study. What comes next will seem counterintuitive. I would encourage you strongly to make Bible study a part of your new year. <laughs> Wait, so we cancel it today? I, yeah, okay. Um, could there be any better way to spend your new year than to hear more about this, the love of your God for you? I would encourage you strongly if Bible study has not been part of your regular Sunday morning culture or tradition, consider making it such in 2024. You will be blessed. It won't always be in ways that you go, oh man, I know what to do this week. But God has this way of just building your faith so that whenever comes, whatever comes, you're able to handle it. And so I would encourage you strongly to consider making Bible study a part of your, part of your New Year tradition. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, women's Bible study returns on January 9th. On the 28th, we'll have our annual voters meeting, give or take 15 minutes after worship here in the, uh, the sanctuary. On a personal level, um, our daughter, granddaughter Josie, once again, has to, had to be hospitalized this past week. She had a bad cold, which morphed into pneumonia, which morphed into her um, heart rate skyrocketing. It was as high as 170 beats per minute, which is kind of like running a marathon. Um, and so she is in Children's Hospital. Thankfully, she is improving. When we prayed, give us this day our daily bread, we were praying for her which is why I didn't ask for a special prayer to be said because we were praying for her already as a part of that. Um, her little brother, Teddy, is also getting sick, so Beth got up at 4.15 this morning to relieve Dad, who'd been up all night with little Teddy. So Grandma is home playing Grandma and doing baby duty at this point. Your prayers are certainly appreciated. Uh, Josie is improving. Prayerfully, she'll be able to come out of the hospital in a couple of days. But thank you for allowing me to make this announcement now so I didn't have to explain it 50 times out in the entryway. It's uh, a whole lot easier to do it this way. Hey, we go into 2024. Who knows what the year will bring? Who cares? We go with God. And because we go with God, we go with joy and confidence. Amen? amen. And amen. Amen.